In today's video, we are going to go over all 17 custom trading indicators that I have created and published. 17 indicators in one video. And not only will I just throw them up on the chart, I'm also going to talk about how I make use of each and every one in my own trading. So in reality, we're about to have a pretty in-depth conversation about how I see the markets move. All right, now that everyone that just wants to be told what stocks to buy has clicked off the video... Those of you that are ready to study and learn, strap in. Jumping right into it, the first indicator we're going to talk about I call Bollinger Breaks, and it's simply just putting up arrows and down arrows where the stock breaks, obviously, below or above the Bollinger Band, respectively. It just makes the chart a lot cleaner. You don't have to have the ugly Bollinger Bands thrown all over your screen. You just get these nice, concise arrows to show you where a stock is, according to the default settings of Bollinger Bands, is either undersold, or sorry, oversold or overbought. And the way you use this one, pretty obvious. This is a nice reversal indicator. You can see on the SPY daily chart how well this thing works using the blue up arrows as buys, using the kind of pinkish magenta down arrows as sells. You can just see how buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, even in sort of this downtrending market. I mean, these buys didn't play out too well, but, um, you know, buy, break even, buy, really nice bounce, buy, really nice bounce. Obviously, when SPY is strong, it's really nice. Nice, simple reversal indicator, nice, concise, easy to read. Bollinger Band breaks. For the next study, I'm going to jump into my website itself just so you all have an idea of what the heck I'm talking about. But I'm already obviously signed up, already logged in. If I now go to our strategies, I click on Think or Swim behind my big old head here. This is going to open my tabs, in which, of course, you can have access to a lot more than just the studies. The studies is what we're covering today. You can also obviously access strategies, scanners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Jump into the studies. That Bollinger Band reversal was the first one we just covered. Matter of fact, here's three free studies for you because I can't be asked to blur these out in post. I'm not that greedy. You can have three free studies. This moving average cross momentum is the next one we're going to cover. So if I go ahead and copy this share link, change my view here, I'm going to go to setup, open shared item, paste preview import and just that easily now I can go into my edit studies and if I type in uh, DTS moving average cross momentum just double click on that I now have that study on my chart so daytradingstrategies.net it's that easy you can access all of my custom codes import them into your charts just that easily but let's go ahead and talk about the next one here this a uh, little bit obvious it's called uh, moving average cross momentum indicator um, I'm not going to do this for every single study but basically I'm trying to think if there's any examples where there's not I, I want to say every study where it's applicable such as this where you have you know two different length moving averages all you have to do is click on the cog of the study and i've made sure in my custom codes to make them all set as inputs which means that you can easily change the lengths or or whatever it may be for that study to fit what works best for you so by default the fast MA length is 20, the slow MA length is 50, but you can change this to whatever you want it to be very easily. But the crux of this study, if it's not obvious, when the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, you are green and bullish, vice versa, you are red and bearish. And um, yeah, I mean, it works okay. It works pretty well on this chart. I actually changed it from its default. Let's go back and see what the 20 and 50 looks like. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I like I like the 20 and 50, the way this looks a lot better than the 100, 200, whatever. But this, once again, just giving you a nice, clear, concise idea. And you'll start to notice as I'm going over my studies, how easily and sort of the point of a lot of these is how much they just cl like clean up your charts so that you can now start to throw a couple together on the same chart. Maybe I now only want to buy Bollinger Band breaks if the moving average crossover is also green. If the moving average study is also showing strength, I then want to use the Bollinger Band study and look at how easily you can see that with these studies. Imagine you had two moving averages and Bollinger Bands on this chart. Imagine what that would look like. Actually, screw it. We got time. This is a YouTube video. Let's just show you what that would look like in Instead. Tell me now, could you find areas? Could you easily find an easily 
easily navigate charts to find areas where you should take trades when your chart looks like this? I know I can't. There's a lot of you out there that are much smarter than me. Maybe you look at this and go, Trey, yeah, it's not that hard. But I would rather have the colors, the arrows, really simplify things, allow you to analyze charts faster, which allows you to analyze more charts, which allows you to find more plays. Phew, we got a, we got a little ranty on that one. That was indicator number two. We've got 15 more of these to go. Let's speed it up a little bit. We won't have to cover in depth so much on every single one of these studies, but I have actually turned on a new study. This one is simply called moving average momentum. So instead now of you having two moving average lengths in which you're worried about which one is above the other, this is now simply just is the price above or below a single moving average. So a lot of people like to use that to identify trend, and a lot of people like to use the moving average crossover to identify trend. So really just whichever one kind of fits your fancy here between indicators two and three. Custom indicator number four of 17. This one's just a, actually an ease of use indicator. This one I call multi moving average. And if you've used thinkorswim studies at all, you know sort of how annoying it is to have to add multiple moving averages, change their length, change their colors, remove when you don't need, reload them on new charts across different time frames. You know how annoying it is. So the purpose of this indicator is just that you can come in, set whatever moving average type you would like from the dropdown, set whatever lengths you would like for up to five moving averages. Then of course, if you don't want five, say you only want three, you could just turn off these plots for, uh, for three, four, five. So say you only want two in this instance, I can't do math, but that's how easy you would do that as well. So this one's just multiple moving averages, just kind of a ease of use software code update. Number five, this one's fun. So much like the moving average momentum where green bullish, red bearish, this is RSI momentum and you have three colors, obviously green bullish, red bearish, but orange is sort of an in-between level. So on my custom or sorry, on my default, should I say, setup, I have the upper RSI set at 50, the lower RSI set at 40. Of course, you come in, change this, whatever works best for you. But um, if the RSI is over 50, you're green. If it's below 40, you're red. If it's between those two values, it's orange. And it's pretty obvious, once again, how you use this one. It gives you an idea of when a ticker is bullish, when it's in a middling state, and when it's in a bearish state. Indicator number six, this is auto support and resistance. So this is starting to get into no indicators used at all, only price action. And it is simply drawing the lowest point of X number of bars back as the cyan line here and the highest point of X number of bars back as the salmon colored line here. And once again, this can be changed. Actually, if I was using this on the daily, I'd make it larger. I'd make it something like 50 and 50. By default, it's 15 and 15. So you can see a little bit more now in a larger time frame, sort of your larger support areas and resistance areas on the chart. I haven't mentioned this yet, but um, all of these indicators will move to any time frame and will move to any ticker. If I go to the Amazon one minute ticker, it will all change. You don't have to worry about updating anything. You don't have to worry about adjusting anything. Really nice part of thinkorswim code. But I'm touching on that because I usually use this indicator on intraday charts. That's why I have it defaulted to 15 and 15 because I usually use it if I want to find some intraday support and resistance areas. But of course, adjust it to whatever time frame and however strategy you trade. Back to the SPY daily chart and back to indicator number 17. This one very tied into the previous indicator. So this one I call price action momentum buy. So this is painting arrows where much like on the previous indicator, you were seeing the lowest point of the last 15 bars. This indicator is painting a white up arrow if the closing price is below that lowest point of the last 15 bars. And if the price closes above the 200 simple moving average, and yes, you can see I don't have that 200 simple moving average turned on. That is all built within the study and it's all adjustable. So you can change it to 100 length uh, SMA and 50 length bars back breaking the low and it will auto adjust. You see obviously getting much less signals with that kind of setting, but it will auto adjust to what you want it to do. So um, that's number seven. Seven, I think we're on seven. Price action momentum buy. Numero Ocho is anchored VWAP. And I built this one more just out of frustration that Thinkorswim doesn't include this out of the box. Thinkorswim has, 
I want to say thousands, that might be an exaggeration, but it's probably not far off of out-of-the-box studies to choose from. And anchored VWAP is a pretty popular study, and Thinkorswim didn't have one, so... I went and built one myself. Essentially, this is just taking your volume weighted average price, but from a chosen start date, which of course you can set to whatever you want. Once again, just a very, like, I don't want to say very common, but a common study that I kind of couldn't believe Thinkorswim didn't have. So I went and built myself. That's number eight, anchored VWAP. For number nine, we are coming into the intraday chart. We are on the five minute chart of SPY. That is how this indicator is built. That is what it is used for intraday charting. It is called uh, volatility pivot points and it utilizes the obviously volatility of the ticker recently to paint a median expected line, a like a small gain expected line, a large gain expected line, and then sort of a medium loss and maximum loss expected lines as well. Today was CPI day, inflation report day. It was a very volatile pre-market for SPY. And as you can see, funnily enough, we actually ripped up and above our expected maximum gain. But look at what happened. We've actually drawn right back down and right, right around that. So you can see even how today you could start to get an, an idea of you know, hey, maybe it's not time to buy. Maybe it's time to, you know, be locking profits. I don't want to say looking for shorts up here, or whatever, but, you know, it's probably not a great time to buy up here above the max day, right? And another very important thing to point out about these lines is these lines were painted at open. These don't adjust. You'll see a lot of indicators like this that just kind of adjust and slide with the price intraday. I, this one does not do that. And there's a setting in here for show only last period. If I turn that off, you will see it painting every day. You can sort of see its performance there, but obviously this looks really ugly. So I created a setting to show only last period to only see today's, but that's number nine. Yes. Volatility pivot points. For number 10, into the big double digits of custom studies covered in one video. Whew. Hopefully you guys are still here with me. This is actually a big one. This actually might be my most complex code that I'm going to cover in today's video and it's auto trend line. So this is drawing price channels across three different time frames. Your white dash line here, if it's not obvious, longest time frame. You have a medium time frame here and then you have a short time frame here. And this is basing based off of the upper and lower trend lines across that time frame. And then the long is always colored white, just so it's not confusing. And then the medium and short time frames will be colored yellow if they're going up. Honestly, don't ask me why I decided to color them yellow instead of green. That, that I, don't, I don't actually know why I did that. Maybe it's just so it doesn't blend in with the bars. I don't know what six months ago, Trey was thinking when he coded this, but if these were to be trending down, let's see if I can find a stock that's trending down. Um, no hate, but um, if this were to be trending down, um, you will notice that they actually auto change colors to red just for a little bit faster. Once again, being able to quicker, more quickly, English is hard talking about this much code, more quickly analyze charts to more quickly find plays. So that's number 10, auto trend lines, a biggie. Number 11, and I've actually turned on a strategy for this because the next couple of studies are actually built around backtest data of strategies. Now, the point of this video is not a strategies video. Maybe I'll make another one of these where I cover all of my strategies. That might be a good video idea, especially if this one does well. So hit like if you're enjoying it, but I've turned on a swing trade strategy and the study that I've turned on is these green histogram bars down here. It looks a lot like the floating PL, but what I did with my trade PL study was I made it not count the intra, the intra trade change. If I just turn on the default floating PL study here, so I can show you what I'm talking about. This of course is always fluctuating. When you are in a trade, it is fluctuating up or down. And that really messes with your back test data. It really messes with like your max drawdown percentages and things like that. Not that intra-trade max drawdown doesn't mean anything, but a lot of times you're not as worried about that. You want to know what your drawdown is as of the close of your trade. So I created a, uh, I created a study that only changed, you will notice when it buys here, 
nothing changes until it exits that trade, then it makes the jump up, right? Then the PL changes. Now, one big caveat with this study, and it's going to bleed over into the next study. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find a quick example, but the way I built this is I built it to update when there's not a change in PL. Basically, that's how it recognizes that you're out of a trade. So it will sort of break if your trade, if your strategy enters immediately after the bar that it got, you know, that it exited on before, because it won't notice that there was a pause there. So that's sort of a caveat right now with this study and the next one. It's something I'm trying to fix. I've actually been working on it for a while. I can't figure out a fix, but for the most part, this study works just fine. Just if you have a strategy that is taking a ton of trades, you might notice a little bit of wonkiness. The next study just expands on that. It makes use of the previous study where we are counting our PL only after the trade closes. This uses that in order to count total trades to provide you with your trade PL or your total PL, sorry, your win percentage, your average win, your average loss, and your max drawdown. And it works pretty well. But once again, you will notice actually within my strategy, this first label is coming from my strategy, not the study. It says it's taken 47 trades. My study is showing 67 trades. And that's probably because um, also what will happen if the close of two bars happens to be exactly the same, the count that I covered previously will also think that it exited a trade. So, you know, I'm looking at the entire daily chart of SPY here since early 1993, there have must have been 20 instances where while in a trade, there was two back-to-back -back closes that were exactly the same price. So you're getting kind of a handful of faint number of trades in there, which are probably throwing these numbers off a little bit. Now, it's not great. It doesn't make the study useless though, especially if you're quickly working on code. So what I use this for while I'm creating strategies, I have this up. And even with this little bit of wonkiness, it's still very helpful to in real time when I change a variable in a strategy to immediately see how that impacts my max drawdown and win percentage and average win and average loss. Still very, very helpful, even with the slight wonkiness that I'm still trying to get worked out. Next, you will notice I've turned my strategy off. We don't need that anymore. If you look at my volume subchart here down bottom, you will notice some labels here. These are my uh, daytradingstrategies.net volume labels, where you have a label for the total volume, uh, the volume of the current bar, the previous bar volume, and the 50-day average volume. Also, a little built-in functionality, this current bar volume is currently red because it is less than the previous day bar volume. If you are looking at a chart that has a higher current bar volume than the previous bar, this will change to green. Also, you can once again come in and if you don't want to see 50-day moving average, I want to see the five-day uh, volume average instead. Once again, just simply change that input from the cog of the settings. This obviously helps you able to dictate, you know, kind of where you stand. What's the what's the volume happening on the ticker I'm looking at today compared to past days? What's that mean for supply and demand? What's that mean for the volatility of the ticker? Once again, a very useful study. Next, we jump down to the SPY one minute chart because that is where our next study is going to function best. You will notice up here in the top left now, multiple different time frame labels. Your one, two, five, 15 and 30 minute, your one and four hour, your one day and your one week. And right now they're all green, which means that each and every one of those time frames is currently above the 200 simple moving average, which once again can be adjusted. And obviously if you want to turn specific labels off, I don't care about every one of these time frames. that can easily be done from the drop downs as well. But if I just uh, quickly click around here, oh look, Apparently on NVIDIA, the one minute is below the 200 uh, time frame. If I look at Mara, I know this has been really weak lately. Yeah, on Mara, you'll notice everything below the four hour, all the smaller time frames are below the 200 simple moving average. And this is obviously very useful. Everyone tells you to use multiple time frames and, and you should be analyzing across multiple different time frames. This just helps you get, once again, a much faster, faster version of that. Now, instead of having to click into every time frame and analyze them, I can quickly do that from my chart at a glance to more quickly analyze charts 
to find more plays. Next, and with just a few more to go, we are back on the SPY daily chart. And have you all looked at the volume profile before? Let me actually load it in. Let me load in the volume profile indicator, a very useful indicator. Volume is basically everything in the stock market. Understanding where supply and demand lands is very, very important. But the way that this like stretches your chart out and adds these like ugly bars and weird fades. And it actually normally, let me actually, if I turn my indicator off, it doesn't overlay these lines over the chart either. I didn't like that. I wanted to make a better volume profile. So that's what I built. What this does is it just takes those lines, your median volume, your upper and lower range, and it expands them across the charts, gets rid of all the ugly extensions, all the ugly fades, I think actually makes the indicator useful. And it's very important, this one to be useful once again, because volume is the most important indicator. And if you can, as much as you can use that to analyze on your charts, you should be right now you'll notice it's really wonky by default it loads whatever time you're looking at on your chart so right now i'm looking at the max daily chart on spy so this is taking the volume profile since 1993 on the daily chart of spy which is a little ridiculous so if i change that to just the last month you will notice it adjust and you will now have a volume profile since the beginning of March. And you can get an idea where your sort of uh, volume support and volume resistance lies. And obviously there's multiple different time frames that can be changed to depending on what time frame you trade on. So these are actually our last two studies, and we're going to talk about both of them at the same time because they're very interchangeable. At least these arrows don't make sense without the dots. So let's start with the dots. What these five lines represent is five different momentum indicators that are very popular, but this just makes them all inclusive. They don't crud up your chart and it makes them very easy to read and understand once again for the greater purpose of that faster analyzing to allow you to find more moves. But this top line represents the total MACD value. Then you've got MACD histogram, fast stochastic, slow stochastic, and RSI. And the green represents bullish. The red represents bearish. Once again, at a glance now, you're getting a taste of, hey, I made the top line actually a little bit thicker because I think MACD is the most important. So sort of read it top down. Hey, you know, we're, we're really bullish right now and we're starting to get some dips. Maybe this is a decent buy opportunity, right? Um, speaking of that, let's jump up to the arrows. Our arrows represent those opportunities. So actually right here, you just didn't quite get a dip by arrow because what represents the dip by arrow is when the top MACD line is green and all four dots below are red. And in this instance, the RSI just didn't quite turn red, just didn't quite dip enough to get down there. But you will notice some instances back here of that happening. Top line green, all four red below you get a buy. Um, the purple arrow represents reversals. This is where the top line is still red, but all four dots below it turn green. That's a reversal indicator. And the, um, the red down arrow represents a short indicator. And this is where the top line is red and all indications below it are green. And I didn't mention for the buy indicators, you also have to be above the 200 simple moving average. For the short indicator, you also have to be below the 200 simple moving average, sort of a trend continuation type indicator, because that's the kind of trader I am. But that's both the dot plot and the dot arrow study from daytradingstrategies.net. If you've made it this far in my video, I genuinely want to celebrate you. I've been in this game long enough. I've been making content for over six years now. I see my average watch time. I see where the dips happen on the videos. I know what it's like. Most people, 90% of people, just wanna be told what stocks to buy. Trey, make a YouTube video. Tell me what stocks to buy next week. I'm the kind of person that wants to teach you all how to fish. It's why I made all of my, you know, study strategy scanners all publicly available. Now, of course, am I looking to make a penny off of it? Yes, I don't give them away for free. I love you all. I'm sorry, but I've spent hundreds of hours on this stuff. As much as I love you, I can't give it to you for free. Um, but those of you that make it all the way through videos like this, once again, I do like to celebrate you. You get First off, you get access to all 17 of these studies, all of my, all of my, you know, strategies, my scanners, my workspace, not to mention the things that are within TradingView and the FinViz scanners as well, all for only $25 a month. 
Yes, I charge a month because I am constantly updating my codes. If I go to the bottom to my change log here, I am constantly updating these codes because strategies and, and codes don't work forever. They're not static. You always sort of need to be optimizing. So it's sort of a living, breathing, you know, when I add new codes, you get access to them. When I update, you get access to them. But of course, just like anything else, if you want to cancel, you can cancel at any time. So feel free to sign up, download everything you want, then cancel if that's what you want to do. But I'm ranting. Those of you guys that made it this far in the video, if you use discount code END at checkout, you're going to get $10 off your first month. I just covered 17 indicators in this one video that you can now go download all of them, plus so much more for 15 bucks. That's ridiculous. It's, it's honestly ridiculous value. I wish something like this was offered when I was a beginner trader, but daytradingstrategies.net, discount code end, link in the description down below. Go check it out. With all that being said, that's going to wrap up today's video. A really long one, hopefully a really impactful one. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. You obviously enjoy this kind of content. Don't make, uh, make sure you don't miss out on any future videos. On the outro screen, I will link you actually to that dot plot indicator we covered last. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out that video. Trading stocks. He talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks.